Hey everyone, welcome back to Serving Up Plumbing with me, David Butler. Today, we're gonna to be talking about repairing gas water heaters when you have no hot water or the pilot lights going out or maybe you're running out of hot water too quickly. We're gonna talk about it in a two-part series. The first part, we're gonna actually have the parts in hand right here on the table and go over what is what and how it operates in the water heater. The second part, we're gonna go over to the water heater and we're gonna turn it on, operate it, and see exactly how all those parts we've already explained work. But before we get into that, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and make sure and leave me a comment if there's something you'd like to see in the future. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get on this and let's take a look at some water heater parts. These are all the parts in your tank type gas water heater that help heat the water. You have your gas control valve, which is the brain of the system. You have your burner, which of course is self-explanatory. That's where the flame comes out and that's what heats the water. And then you have your safety controls, your pilot light, your thermal pile, and your igniter. So let's talk about the brain first, shall we? This is your gas control valve. You can set your temperature by it, you light it, you turn it on and off. This is what keeps you safe. This is what turns the gas on and off every time the burner kicks on. These days, these are all electronic. This light flashes when it's in the proper heating mode. We'll notice that when we go over in part two and look at the tank. Now, normally it's in the off position when you first get it. In order to light the pilot light, you'll turn it to pilot and this depresses. If you can see, it pushes in. So you have to push this in and while you're doing that, you have to press this spark igniter. And you wanna press that fairly quick. We'll show you that over in part two. Once it lights, we're gonna turn it up to generally between A and B or B. This is gonna run your water somewhere in the neighborhood of 130 degrees. Now, granted, 120 degree water will scald you in five minutes, but it's generally not hot enough on the setting to give you enough hot water at your faucets and fixtures and your shower, of course. So we do have some heat loss from the water heater to your pipes also, and that comes into play. So at a B setting, it'll be about 130 degrees, which is a really good setting to start at. And you don't wanna run the water heater any higher than you have to, cause the hotter you run it, the less efficient it is. And it's gonna cycle on and off more often. This also, when it does have a problem, has flashing light codes. These flashing light codes tell you things that are going wrong with the control valve or parts of it in the uh, burner heating system. Now, I will tell you this, they're a good guideline, but they're not always dead on. They give you a place to start. For plumbing professionals, they know exactly what to do with all these. If you're a homeowner, sometimes this can get confusing as to what's exactly wrong. One thing about this, if you ever do have to change one out, you wanna make sure and be extremely careful and drain the water heater down completely before you change this out. The reason being is this is actually a computer board in here. As you can see right here, there's a full computer board. If you get any water inside this control valve, it's gonna short circuit and now you're gonna to have to buy a new control valve. There is no repairing this unit once it gets wet. It's time to buy a new one. Sometimes you might get lucky and dry it out, but you're gonna be without hot water for a little bit if you try that. You have your burner assembly, you have your pilot light where those connections go. You have your plug-in right here for your thermal pile. And right here is your igniter wire that plugs in. All of these plug into the wires that come out of your burner assembly. There is one more thing I wanna talk about. And you can see this probe right here that comes out the back. This is where it screws in the tank. Underneath this stainless steel cap right here, there is some wiring and it can get water in it and short out sometimes. Therefore, you could have a problem there that can also start leaking through the core of this and out the gas valve. So that's another item that can occur. If there's ever any water leaking out of this gas control valve, it does have to be replaced. But there is a sensor back in here and that's what tells you how hot the water is. It also tells this when to turn on and off. All right, let's talk about the burner assembly. As I said, the gas burner assembly is connected to your gas control valve. These two pipes right here, this is your burner and this is your pilot light. These two connect up to your gas control valve. These wires right here are the ones that connect to your thermal pile and also your flame rod. This is the burner. Here's your pilot assembly with your thermal pile, your pilot and your igniter. This is where the gas comes out underneath the tank and heats up the water. Now, 
One thing that's under this, I've disassembled one of these, and you can see this right here. This is what's called the gas orifices. It's actually underneath the burner itself. The main reason I want to show you this is because sometimes you may have a propane water heater or you might have a natural gas water heater. These are different in the two water heaters. You cannot interchange burner assemblies or parts or anything from a natural gas to a propane. Those heaters are very specific when it comes to tank water heaters. So make sure that you always have the right water heater. Natural gas water heater should be stamped on the inspection plate on it or LP gas. As you notice here also the pilot assembly, how it's connected on here. And you can see it right here on the whole burner assembly. This is the thermal pile, this is the pilot, and there's your igniter on the bottom. That's what the push button spark does when you push the button in on your gas control valve. It makes a spark jump across here so that the gas coming out of your pilot light will light up. This flame burns on top of your thermal pile. This is the thermal pile. Now you're going, what the heck's a thermal pile? Well, that's a good question. Let's get a little closer look at it. So we have the thermal pile, the igniter, and we have our pilot light right here. As you can see, it's got a directional tip on it to make the flame burn directly on this. What happens with this is, and you notice it has wires coming out of it, when we put this heat on here in the thermal pile, it actually produces a very tiny current of electricity. We call it millivolts. The thermal pile here produces somewhere around 350 or more millivolts to create the current that operates this nice little gas valve and makes this light flash. Now, why do we need that? Well, this is a safety device. The pilot light burns, this heats up, makes electricity, sends a signal to your gas control valve that, hey, everything's good to go. It's kind of like mission control. If this is sending in electrical signals to this, then it knows it's okay to fire off the burner. If there are no electrical signals coming from this, this knows, hey, something's not right. I don't need to fire my burner off on my water heater. Therefore, this is a critical part to whether or not your water heater will stay lit. If this malfunctions, the thermal pile, it will not stay lit your water heater will go out. Now, you can light it with the manual override. When you push this button in right here on pilot, this is actually overriding your safety device on your thermal pile. That lets gas go through your pilot light and we're able to light this pilot light. We hold it down for generally 30 seconds and it will heat this up enough to start producing electric current. Then this gas valve reads the electric current and says it's okay to come on. Once that happens, the flashing light will start flashing and you can turn the gas control switch to on. Now, what can go wrong here? Again, the thermal pile can be bad. The igniter cannot be working. You can usually look through the cute little sight glass here on your water heater burner. That gives you an option to see the igniter sparking and also the pilot light burning. It also allows you to take a look at the burner once you light it to make sure it's burning properly. This pilot light too can go bad. Now, how can that happen? Well, if you ever get any moisture in it or anything else, if water gets inside this, this can cause a big problem. This is what we call the orifice on the pilot light. And it's hard to see on camera, but there's an extremely tiny hole right in the end of that. That's what regulates the gas going into your pilot light right here. So make sure you always have that orifice in place and also, if it does ever get underwater or anything, you may have to take this apart, clean this little hole out of this orifice because it will rust over rather easily. And that can be a problem. But if that's the case, your pilot light won't light at all. If the thermal pile is bad, your pilot light will light, but it won't stay lit. Now there is one other thing that can go wrong with the thermal pile. It can light, but maybe it's not producing enough millivolts. Now, we have a special tool that we use. That's a, an electric meter that we can test the millivolts on it. And we'll do that in part two when we go over to the water heater. If we test this and it's below 350 or it's 350 and dropping, then it's likely we need to replace this thermal pile. If it's 350 and rising, and it can go up to as high as 700, I've seen them burn, then it's okay. But if this is 350 and dropping, we've got a problem with our thermal pile. It needs to be replaced. There's one other small part that's involved here. And that's this right here. Now, the majority of our water heaters nowadays are what we call FVR approved water heaters. That means flammable vapor resistant. Sometimes they say FVIR, flammable vapor ignition resistant. Now, 
Part of that system is this right here. This is what we call our flame rod or flame sensor. Now, if you notice, it's far enough away from here that the flame can't touch it from this burner. And there is a special flame screen we'll talk about in later videos that's underneath here, allowing the combustion air to come up in this chamber. Well, if we ever have a situation like you've got a garage and you kick over a can of gasoline, and these gasoline vapors get into the water heater closet or near the water heater, and they start coming up into the burner housing. Well, that's a very dangerous situation in most water heaters. Many a home have caught fire because of a situation like that, whether it be paint thinner or gasoline or some other flammable liquid that gets spilled in a garage. Well, what happens in this case, this device right here, the flame sensor, flame rod, if flame catches on fire in here from vapors of gasoline or some other flammable liquid, and fire touches this rod, then it will trip this little mechanism right here. And if you notice, these wires are coming from here going straight into this, which goes into your gas control valve. Well, if this little thing trips right here, your flame sensor, it has a push button on it. If you ever reach up and push that and it clicks, for some reason the flame rod had fire on it and it tripped. That's not a good thing. You usually can need to call a licensed professional to come check out your water heater in this case. It may have to have the water heater replaced. You may have to replace the burner assembly. We've got to find out what caused that problem to make that trip, but that will make your water heater not relight. Also, sometimes you can just get corrosion. If you've got your water heater in an area where there's some type of chemical stored or chlorine or anything of that nature, or if it's just high moisture area, sometimes these little spade connectors right here can even corrode up just enough to keep those millivolts from passing through. So sometimes you can just pull those on and off and scratch it up a little bit and gain enough millivolts passing through to make your system work again. And that's what our flame sensor rod is and that's what is one of the primary parts to an FVR water heater. That's it. Now we've covered all the parts that go into the burner assembly and burner system for your water heater. Maybe it'll save you a service call sometime, who knows. I hope this video has been helpful today and I hope you've learned something about your water heater. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, be very careful out there. You always wanna make sure that you've got the gas turned off whenever you're working on a water heater. If you're a licensed professional, you know those things, and I'm hoping it's helped you know a little bit more about how a gas water heater operates. And like I said earlier, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like it, and let me know what you'd like to see in the future on Serving Up Plumbing. Just go tell your friends the butler did it.